um, all of these statements be heard in silence. I call the member for Nanango. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is a privilege to hold a seat in this House. It is a privilege that is hard earned, and we have it at the behest of our constituents. The constituents across this great state who understand what it is to feed our people, to clothe our people, they are the ones, Madam Deputy Speaker, that have spoken out against this bad law. There is no one sadder than me that the great Andrew Cripps hasn't got a seat in this place anymore. Because the former member for Hinchinbrook worked his guts out for the people of Queensland, along with the LNP, to make common sense vegetation management laws. So our farmers knew what they were working with. They knew what boundaries. These people are not criminals. These are people that are just trying to look after their land, to keep it in the place where it should be for the next generation. They are the custodians of our great state. And it annoys me so much that we are back in this chamber defending those common sense laws. Madam Deputy Speaker, today is one of those days in this parliament that exposes the absolute ignorance and the blatant disrespect that those opposite in the Labor Party have for our Queensland landholders and farmers. Labor's proposed vegetation management laws are a brutal and unprovoked attack on the farming families and communities right across Queensland. No other issue, no other issue so starkly demonstrates the difference between them and us. The party I lead, the Liberal National Party, will always stand shoulder to shoulder with our regional producers, our farmers and our landholders across this state. The LNP will protect farmers' rights to run sustainable, successful businesses and support the families and the next generation. We will always respect and support the industry that is the economic backbone of this great state. Sadly, but not surprisingly, none of those proud principles matter to those opposite. If they did, they wouldn't be reintroducing these draconian native vegetation laws that just make it simply harder for our regional people to get ahead. And it's not the first time. The Labor Party have for decades been trying to turn the screws on this proud profession to satisfy their own green obsession and buy those votes in the southeast corner. We'll make no mistake behind each and every Labor member in this House is a union master pulling their strings. For decades, for decades, Labor have put themselves, order, their order. green mates and their union masters before the real people of Queensland, and I acknowledge those sitting in, in the gallery here today. Order. Mr. S Madam Deputy Speaker, the LNP is committed to protecting our precious environment. We support laws that properly and fairly regulate the vegetation management practice, practices that farmers must carry out to maintain and boost the productivity of their land. We support laws that protect the streams and rivers of our Great Barrier Reef catchments. But the, labour law, the laws that Labor is proposing are not fair and will hurt farming and grazing families and their communities. They are not fair to the thousands of Queensland farmers who invested in land, livestock, equipment, with the clear expectation of being able to manage their properties, to make the money they need, to pay the bills, the taxes that this Labor government keep putting on them. Labor's laws literally pull the rug from underneath these farming families. These laws lock up 
nearly a million hectares of agricultural land from routine, routine practices of veg management that keep land in production. They shut down the ability to open up any new agricultural land, killing off thousands of potential jobs and denying billions of dollars in export income for our state. These laws reduce farmers to criminals on their own land by reactivating and giving more power to the Labor's dreaded trade police. These laws tie up rural producers in reams of red tape, including costly bureaucratic development application processes that see these landholders charge thousands of dollars just to manage their own thickened vegetation. And, at, and all at a time when Queensland desperately needs to grow this important agricultural sector. We've had years of prolonged drought, loss of unemployment in the regional areas, and how does Labor defend this? With dodgy figures, no consultation, that's how. The very people these laws hit the hardest weren't even given a seat at the table when the laws were written. The bill was introduced with such a short period of time, and I personally, on behalf of the LNP, want to thank each and every 13,000 Queenslander who submitted into the committee. I want to thank each and every Queenslander who stood out here on Speaker's Corner and rallied for their rights. I want to thank my family members, graziers from Wando, and who stood out there to defend the rights of my family to continue farming in this great state. I am a proud daughter of an agricultural producer, and I am not going to stand in this chamber and let those opposite call my family, my friends and the farmers of Queensland criminals. Yeah. To add insult to injury, Madam Deputy Speaker, we have for decades had to listen to Labor peddling the mistruths... Order. Order. The mistruths about vegetation management in Queensland. Happy to trash the reputation, but happy to stand over there and claim chickpeas are going to solve the world. Well, Premier, I have news for her. You need land to grow chickpeas. Yeah. It's funny, that. My husband and I have grown chickpeas. We know what it takes to grow a chickpea. And if you're going to stand up and take the credit for Queensland farmers for growing the chickpeas that export to feed thousands of starving people across this world of ours. You need laws that allow the landholder to manage their land. Full stop. Full stop. But don't let the truth ever get in the way of a good story when it comes to the Labor Party and Anastasia Palaszczuk. Madam Deputy Speaker, the hypocrisy of this Labor government is simply staggering. Not only that, they have hidden from Queenslanders the long-term impact the laws will have on all households, quite simply, to make it simple for those opposite. If you make it harder for us to farm our land, it's going to be more expensive in the supermarket. Full stop. Again, it's simple. But unfortunately, this is what we're dealing with. There is no common sense on that side of the House. Now, Ms. Madam Deputy Speaker, I was proud to be a member of the LNP government that helped restore the balance to the vegetation management laws. In 2013, I stood in this House and I spoke about Mr. Alan Crawford, a grazier from Gordon Brook in my electorate. I dealt with Mr. Crawford when I was a lawyer in Kingaroy. And he then continued to talk to me after he fell foul of another Labor government's obsession with farmer bashing in the Veg Management Act of 1999. After, res after responsibly managing his vegetation since the 60s, the tree police dragged Mr Crawford to court, prosecuted and fined him. It took a huge toll on his life. He told me at the time, this has taken 10 years off my life. Well, sadly, Mr Crawford passed away two days ago this week, and I would like to send my heartfelt condolences to the family, to Val, their family and friends, for standing up for these draconian laws after they were at the front line. My message, Madam Deputy Speaker, 
to the rural producers is clear. The Liberal National Party has and will continue to fight for your families. We will fight Labor's law at every turn. These laws are unfair, they are unjust, they are unworkable, and every LNP member in this chamber stands Madam to Deputy vote against Speaker. this bill. The member's time has expired. I